Hello crafty friends and Happy New Year! In today's tutorial you are going to learn how to cut out stamped images using your brother's Scan and Cut STX-125. You can apply the concepts that you learned in today's tutorial to any model of Scan and Cut that you have. Every model dating back to the very first Scan and Cuts will cut out stamped images. I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks with you with the Gangs All Mirror stamp set. This stamp set is available from Stampin' Up! on January 3rd, 2020. It is not something that you can purchase, it is something that you earn. This stamp set is free with a $50 purchase. That's, what, that's how you earn this stamp set. Okay, so please get a hold of me using the contact form if you would like to order this stamp set because I can send you our new catalogs and information about this stamp set. Super adorable and sorry for the glare. So what we're going to do is start to finish. I'm going to show you how I go about stamping these images onto Whisper White cardstock. I'm going to be explaining the materials I use. I'll be explaining why in this particular case I'm going to do a little bit of coloring before I cut and why I usually don't color before I cut. And then I'm going to be showing you how to cut these out using a little outline distance around them and then I'll be showing you how to color them using the stamping blends after, we, after we're done cutting them out. And lastly, as always, what I have always done in my tutorials is I give you a practical reason to be able to apply what you learn. And that is, is when I show you the projects. I'm going to be showing you five projects I created using the Gangs All Mirror stamp set. And those, those projects include tags and cards. So now I'm going to just move my machine away and tilt my camera down so you can see start to finish this entire process. And I have learned based on my friends and suggestions from crafty viewers that, that I should be putting my machine on something that slides because you've heard me make several grunting noises when <laughs> I was trying to move my machine. It kept sticking to the table. And a lot of my crafty friends, like for example, my friend Pat said, why don't you put it on a, on a, pla on a placemat? Which is a brilliant idea and it's like, why didn't I think of it? And now it slides really well. So what I'm, what I'm going to do now is just tilt my camera down and we're going to mount the stamped images. We're going to stamp them and you're gonna see the whole process. You won't miss any steps. So first of all, you, whenever, you have, whenever you stamp, you need stamping blocks. These are stamping blocks. And they're going to be what you stick your stamp to. So in this case, these are cling stamps, rubber cling stamps. I like to stick them into the insides of my lids, but it, people sometimes, sometimes people store them right back in the rubber frame. That's why I save the rubber frame. Okay, now I'm going to take out the gangs all mirror, this big one, and I'm going to mount it onto a stamping block diagonally so that it fits. And let's see which one this was. I'm just looking for the letters. It's stamping block D. Okay, and then we're going to, let's do one of these little guys. We'll do this little stand-up meerkat. He's pretty cute. And let's do this little meerkat sitting on the, in the desert sand. And then the same process goes for when we cut out a little lizard here. We'll put the little lizard next to this one, okay, and a cactus. We'll do the cactus as well. I'll just get another stamping block for that in just a minute. We'll stamp the cactus, so that way you can see how I colored everything. You'll see all my processes I used. So let's, let's do this. Let's take Memento Black ink. And the reason I use Memento Black ink is because later I'll be coloring some of, the, some of these with alcohol markers. I'm not just coloring with alcohol markers, I'm coloring with regular Stampin' markers. When you have such a big stamp, I usually ink it upside down. That way I can really see that I have good coverage. See how it's shiny? So I always turn it upside down. Now you could ink it this way. You could put the ink pad down and you could tap onto it. That would work as well. And I'm going to tap, 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 and I'm just going to go ahead and... I should have a flat surface. Make sure your surface is flat. And I just have a big pile of Whisper White cardstock right now, so that should work. And I'm just going to do one more for good measure. 
and we're gonna so we'll stamp two of each everything that I'm stamping today will stamp two of each that way if we don't have 100% success rate then it's okay because I have a separate one to show you so I'm gonna just take this off and I would I would normally clean this okay so and I have I have a stamp and scrub cleaner tool okay now let's do this one let's stamp the little meerkat and the lizard okay now I can now I can stamp straight down onto the ink pad because it covers it okay so you tap 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 into the ink and then stamp and whenever you want a lighter stamp that one little foot got cut off so I'm going to stamp it a third time and I'm going to leave the foot like that I'm not going to fix the foot because it'll be it'll be a way to teach you a concept of why you always have to enclose your stamped images okay now I'm going to put that off to the side and let's get that cactus we'll get the cactus and the little party hat we'll mount the cactus We'll mount the party hat because these are these are stamps I used in my project projects. Okay, turn up, turn the ink upside down. Tap, tap, tap. Now, a lot of times when I have shown how to cut out stamped images using the scan and cut, and there are loads. I mean, there's probably over 50 tutorials on this very topic on my channel here. I usually already have the images stamped, but we're starting out a new year, and I know a lot of you just got scan and cuts, like maybe Santa brought you a scan and cut. Therefore, I wanna start out this new year by doing every step of the process. So, so you're not, so when you take your scan and cut out of the box, and you just have stamped images in your stash, you know exactly what to do with those. I'm just doing a few of them because they're super cute. That way you won't miss any steps. You'll be able to follow along with whatever stamps that you have. Okay, and I think I'm all done stamping. Get your get your inky stamps away from you so it doesn't you don't rub ink all over yourself while you're while you're working on your projects. Now let's zoom in a little bit. So we have stamped images. Now the the reason I normally never color before I cut out stamped images. I've talked about this a lot in my courses and in my on my channel. Is I usually don't color. Let me get it. Let me get a marker as I'm talking to you. Because if you were to color outside the lines, this this the scan and cut works by scanning in enclosed lines. So these black and white lines are perfect and they're recognizable. But however, if I start if I messed up my coloring, say for example, and I colored outside the lines, say I colored in this meerkat, and I colored outside the lines, then it would scan and it would cut a big hump around the black line. So that's one reason I don't color before I cut because it's unforgiving. It's going to cut around the part you color. That's, that's normally why I don't color before I cut. Today's gonna to be an exception. Um, another, oh, I'm not gonna color the whole thing, but you'll see what I mean. Another reason I don't color before I cut is because not all stamped images cut out perfectly. Okay, so not all cut, stamped images cut out perfectly. So if you, if you spend a lot of time coloring them, maybe they don't cut out perfectly. And you, instead, it's better to just color the ones that cut out perfectly. So, so that way, you're only investing time coloring the ones that actually cut out. And lastly, the reason I don't color before I cut is because I'm not sure what colors I'm gonna use. There's actually more reasons than that. But sometimes I decide on my color combinations later. And having a bunch of cut out blank images helps me decide what to use later. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is explain now, for this reason, this one you don't have to color before you cut. I just need to take a little pencil and I need to fix his little foot so that there's no open area. Okay, so my pencil trick is just you take, let me zoom in, zoom in. You have, if you have any open spaces, you need to enclose them with the pencil. I'm going to leave that one open so you'll see. Okay, I'm going to close that one in. So now he will scan perfectly, maybe a little portion there. So if you see any gaps in your stamped images, be sure to fill in those gaps, but I'll leave that one open just so you see how that works. Now, I could use the pencil trick on these. I could fill in these gaps with my pencil, but I found a way easier method was to color a little, just the sand part. So we're gonna color the sand part before I cut them out. And I do wanna show you that before we get too far into this tutorial, because you, you might go, what is she talking about? I usually don't color before I cut, but right now we're going to be coloring the sandy areas, okay? Why? So that we get this effect. So that when they cut out, we get this little effect where they cut around the part we colored. So I'm just gonna explain that I'm using 
you know the colors I'm using so these are markers these are, this is called Sahara sand if I don't color this before I cut it I will lose all of these dots okay I'm gonna lose all the little dots so you need to make a little whatever you want to whatever you want to cut if that's the round the shape you want to cut and you want all your sand to go with the the meerkat then definitely make a little outline like this this is how I'm doing it and so now it'll outline my colored area you can color in the rest later but I'm just gonna go ahead and while I'm at it so I'm just gonna color in my sand and I'm not using I'm not using alcohol blends right now I'm just using a plain old plain old ink marker this is just Sahara sand stampin marker and it comes in I get I have a big set of markers with all 60 of our colors and I thought this was the best one that looks like sand but I wouldn't I took out my crumb cake as well because crumb cake works works fine too but the meerkats are mostly crumb cake so that's why I wanted the sand to set a little bit apart from them both crumb cake and Sahara sand colors are neutral colors meaning they go with anything whatever background you decide to put them on later they will work with any background and it the color dries a little bit different you, you'd color it and then it dries a little bit lighter see because that's the same one right there that I colored and it dries a little bit lighter okay so there that's how you color before you cut now it's going to recognize my colored shape and it will cut out as one big object which is what I want and of course you might not want that effect you might want to make your own sand later you might not want this little mountain to cut out in which case all these dots will disappear because they're not connected to this main image therefore if that's the, if that's what you're going for if you don't want these to cut out as one big image then of course you wouldn't color before you cut I did a couple examples of that but I really didn't like how they turned out I want this to come out as one big image because it looks so cute as a whole I mean that's what makes these cute I think having a lot of the meerkats together hanging out standing up okay so we'll do this one and a little bit of sand now it's one big image if you were not to color this if you don't color this piece of sand this little meerkat is going to cut out by himself I did a couple like that and it came out cute so if that's what you want then go for it you want that meerkat by himself don't connect the sand because the sand is what's connecting this all as one big image right now and lastly we'll color this one with Sahara sand so now we are ready almost to scan and cut our stamped images whatever stamped images you're having if you do not have success scanning and cutting them some of the tips are you have to move your your images to different parts of your mat because not all mat not all parts of your mat scan equally not all parts of the mat or maybe the the scanning plates not clean and you I showed how to do that on one of my YouTube tutorials oh, we also have to do the cactus we have to do the sand on the cactus okay maybe maybe your scanning plate is not clean maybe you need to move your images to another part of the mat maybe your images are too close to the side of the mat and maybe you need to use a pencil trick to enclose your stamped images there are so many reasons why it might not work and I always get I do have a scan and cut users group that you you can join and ask questions and some just people just write help and don't give me any details but the more details you give me the more that my crafty friends and I the more that we can help you the more details not just help it doesn't work <laughs> so okay so there we go so I'm expecting now I'm gonna zoom back out just showed you how to color color that part before you scan I'm expecting every one of these to scan to be recognized I'm optimistic and I'm except for that one there because this little foot's not enclosed um, that one's going to be what I'm what I'm calling my teaching tool because I like to show why things don't work so now you take your mat and you just attach the paper to your mat and you are going to give it a good rub okay don't rub on the part you just colored but you can use a brayer maybe that would maybe not smear because I didn't really use that much coloring so I'm just using oh you can put you can roll the brayer over it and it will adhere yeah it, it's actually dry enough that I can rub over it which is good 
Okay, now I'm going to open up my machine, load my mat, and then I'll pull the mat, th then I'll pull the machine. For when you first turn on your machine, you have to load your mat. And I'll show you the button I'm using for that. But I just want to show you what I do with my hand right now. So I'm just going to, that's how the, that's how the mat's loading. I just, I just put my hand right there. But don't touch your hand to the rollers. Now I can tilt my camera a bit and show you the whole screen. Let me pull this in a little better. So when you turn on your machine, you see pattern and scan. You're going to select scan because we're going to scan and cut the stamped images. Use your stylus, select scan. We're selecting direct cut because we're going to directly cut out the stamped images. This is asking where do you want to temporarily store the images? And you're going to say on your machine because it's a lot easier. If you want to store it on your wireless account, that's fine, but you have to set that up separately. You know that your wireless is set up correctly if you see this little wireless beaming up there. But you know what? That's another tutorial, so please check that out. Next, you want to select your scanning area. If you have a CM model of scan and cut, you do not need to select your scanning area because you automatically only scan in 12 by 12. But with the SDX models, you can select 12 by 6 or 12 by 12. And since all of my meerkats are fitting in the top part of the mat, I'm going to select the 12 by 6 option. I want to scan in black and white recognition mode, even though I've colored the images a bit because there's good contrast between the foreground and the background. This is where you change it from color recognition mode to black and white recognition mode. Okay, again, I'm using, sorry, I'm gonna make sure I say this again. Use black and white recognition mode whenever you have stamped images with good contrast. You hardly ever need color recognition mode, very rarely. We're gonna say okay, we're gonna say start. It's gonna scan in the stamped images and recognize them for us. And let me find the samples that just fell on the floor so I can tell you about my outline distance. Okay, we want to put, after we scan them in, we want to put a little outline distance around them and that's what, that's what that will look like after it's cut out. All right, so we're, we've scanned them in, it's recognized it, we're gonna say okay. I'm gonna click okay. Now we're going to say ignore object size. We don't want the very, very small little pieces of dirt being recognized, so maybe just, but we also don't want to ignore the, the little party hat. So don't, you want to ignore object size, but you don't want to ignore objects that will actually make your own images disappear. Now the next thing I want to do is say okay, and put a little outline distance. That's this button here. After you say okay, you'll get back to the screen where the outline distance is. The outline distance of 0 0.04, will give me this little effect here on my cactus and this little effect on my little meerkat. And I can see that some of these, some of the inner lines were selected in this one and I, don't, I didn't expect that one to work and I'm gonna zoom in and show you that. So the outline distance is 0 0.04, which is what we want. And we're going to, I'm just gonna, for the sake of, we're gonna say okay. I want to, I want to, actually, for the sake of teaching you this, I want to zoom in. I'm sorry. We're going to use the zoom. You don't have to do this part. You don't have to zoom in. I just want to show you what happened because that little, that little, when we, here, remember how I said, let's not enclose the foot? So now, I'll look at all these different parts now. It got selected. It's now, like, in different parts. You can see all the lines. So that one, I'm going to just have to delete. I'm going to trash. I don't want this one to cut it off. I'm just gonna trash that. So whatever you, whatever didn't cut or didn't select property, you're gonna trash it. See all these extra little pieces like that got selected? I don't want that, I'm gonna trash that. So I think I got rid of the whole thing. It's because the foot was not enclosed. Anyway, I hope my outline distance is still there. <laughs> I'm gonna tell as it cuts, but anyway, so I, I say okay a couple times, I get to the cut part and I click cut and then I click cut again and you just have to keep saying it until you keep sitting okay and cut and start until it gets going. And then I'll see you in two minutes. I'm not gonna make you wait for two minutes and where we will see, we'll unload the mat in two minutes. It is finished cutting. We're going to click okay and we're gonna hit this button to unload the mat. And then I'm, I'm just gonna say okay and I'll show you now the mat and how to remove stamped images from your mat. Okay, we're done with the scan and cut. Now I'm going to show you some coloring techniques and how to remove these. Now, what you need to know 
is if you have a CM model, you need to know this. My model, here's, let me show you my model. My model, I'm using an SDX model. I said I would tell you about the differences because if, if you knew how long it took to create YouTube tutorials, you would understand why I can't create the same tutorial every time for both models of machine. There's really just a couple different types of machines. You either have your CM models or you have your SDX models. In your SDX models, you have auto blade technology. Auto blade technology means that you never have to set the blade depth. I do not have to set the blade depth. It's a very quiet machine. It determines what blade depth to use and it knows how deep to cut into my paper. There are no numbers there, as you can see. This is SDX, it's an auto blade. However, if you have a CM model, you have to set your blade depth, which is no big deal. In fact, I prefer that model in many ways and I don't mind setting my blade depth. And I have two models of the CM series. And in, if you're gonna be cutting whisper weight cardstock, you're going to be using a blade depth of three. To, so, so to set your blade depth on a CM model, just turn it to 12 and then turn it, to always turn it up to the end and turn it back to three. And that's it, or turn it to the blade depth you want. You can test that the blade sticks out a little bit at the bottom. And then you can also do test cuts and maybe four. Sometimes, oh, I'm sorry, it is a four. It is a four with whisper weight cardstock. I apologize, it is a four. Because designer series paper is a three, whisper weight cardstock is a four. I just knew from testing that the blade wasn't sticking out enough. And number five is when I use regular cardstock. But again, it's always good to do a test cut. Okay, so that's the difference between SDX and CM machines. So please don't say, I couldn't watch your tutorial because I don't have that model of machine. All of my tutorials can be applied to any model of machine that you have. All the projects you learn about can be done with any scan and cut you have. Notice I just peeled my cardstock off and now I'm gonna use my little spatula to remove the meerkats from the mat. Oops, that one's mouth is gone. That's interesting. Not sure how that happened, but let's see. This is what's supposed to happen like that. Again, imagine if I had just got done coloring. <laughs> There's a good example. What if I had just got done spending 10 minutes to color with the alcohol blends and then that happened? So only color the ones that successfully cut out. And I did not do that on purpose to teach you about that concept. Okay, now let's show you these. And if another way to remove from the mat is just, aside from the spatula, is just to bend the mat a little bit. Because when you bend the mat a little bit, they come off very, they just sort of pop right off very easily as well. You might be saying, but Paper Chef, I don't have the problem of them sticking too much. I don't have, I have the opposite problem. My mats don't stick enough. Well, in that case, watch my tutorials on how to restick your mat using two-way glue or how to get mats that don't have stick that you can adhere the right amount of stick to yourself or one of my other hacks. Okay, what I'm doing is now I'm removing everything just to make room on the table for the coloring. Okay, so there, there are all the, all of those came out successfully except the one mouth that's missing on the one meerkat. Actually, not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. I'm just turning off my machine so that I can slide it away. Because I can totally salvage, I can totally salvage that meerkat little gang anyway because I can just use the ones that did cut out property. So now I'm gonna just put those in view and I'm not gonna sit in color and, I'm not gonna sit in color like everything for you, but I just wanna give you an idea just to take the mystery out when you see my projects, and I'm gonna show you my projects as I'm sort of coloring, is, is just how I did this. I don't want you to go, well, I can't do that. Yes, you can, you can do this so easily. You know, I, I, what I did first is I decided, you know, the colors I was gonna use. So I decided that, and I even had to Google this because my husband had gone to a zoo and this meerkat was sitting in front of a, um, a heat lamp. <laughs> it was so cool and I, I was like, let me see that picture again. And I wanted to get the colors. And meerkats are just, it's just easy to use what's called, I'm just putting this in there for some color. This is where the meerkats came out of, the celebration brochure. And, and anyway, the meerkats were sitting in front of a heat lamp and they were all just a sort of a crumb cake color. But I wanted to show like sort of the little group of meerkats and I didn't want them to all be the same color. So I took my light and dark crumb cake and I took also, Oh, that was, I'm oh, sorry, this is light and dark crumb cake. So now I'm using alcohol blends and I took some ivory. And I just want to show you how I did, how I did this kind of concept. Okay, so this one would be the dark. I used the dark crumb cake and I used the light crumb cake on the end ones and the ivory on the two middle ones. Okay, so that was straight coloring, no blending. Each little meerkat just matches. And the bottom is Sahara sand, as you recall. That's a regular marker, Sahara sand. Dark crumb cake, light crumb cake on the outsides ivory on the middle. So then I thought, well, that they're cute. 
I mean, I was very happy with my meerkats coloring them solid colors like that. Hey, let's put them on the table. But then I decided, well, you know what? I think the meerkats would look better if there's you know, a little bit of blending going on. So that's what I did is I blended them a little bit and that's what I want to show you right now. But I don't want to, I don't want to do the entire thing, you know, just for interest of saving time. So let me show you maybe my first card. I'll kind of put the first card there. So you have something to look at while I'm, while I'm just blending these a little bit. So to blend, whenever you're blending, you take your dark color. So I'm just going to show you how I did this little guy on the end here, how I did this little guy, this little meerkat. You take your dark color and all our alcohol blends have a thin side and a thick side. And I just take your alcohol blend and you outline the outside of whatever you stamped. Okay. And I can color the whole tail and so like that. So you don't want to do all of them at once because alcohol blends better when it's a little bit wet. So you don't go coloring all of your images at once. Just do one or two meerkats at a time. So then you take your light. I'm taking my light crumb cake and I'm just doing circular motions. Okay, circular motions. I tried to color the eyes a separate color, but that didn't really work out. So I ended up just coloring them brown like everything else. Circular motions. And then when it, when it blends, you can see the gradation of colors. And that's how I got this effect and it even dries a little bit. So now, so it dries like a little bit lighter than when I colored it. So that's how I blended those. And then I'll just show you how I did the cactus and why I didn't color the tops of the cact cactus or cacti right away. So I, I cut out a bunch of the cactus and like we just did. And I used this, this, this paper here and this card base. This card base is old olive and I stamped an old olive. So I decided right away I'm going to color all of my little cactus, cacti, in old olive, light and dark. Because I knew that would go with the card stock that I have a lot of. Here's another meerkat. So what I did again is I took the dark old olive and move that into the to the camera's view here. So I just went around just like that. And again, there's no right or wrong way to, to do any coloring or blending. This is just what I look what I thought looks good for this cactus. I outlined the lines in the dark old olive and I just drew around the outside. Then I took light old olive and I just used those circular motions again and the brush tip. So again, there's a, there's a thin side and a thick side, the brush tip side. That's all I did, brush tip. I do all my coloring at once while I'm watching TV. Then all of my little pieces are colored and I was able to create all my little projects. Okay, so that's how I did solid color coloring, blended coloring. And then what I did is I took a marker for the top and I decided it depends on which project. I, the reason I didn't color, I looked up on Google the images of what color cactus flowers were, even though I have been to the desert and I've seen yellow cactus flowers, flowering cactus. But I thought, well, they, then I saw a lot of different shades, like anything goes. Lots of cactus have different color flowers on them. So then I decided, well, I'm going to change this color, this color of the flower on the cactus, depending on the project that I'm using. It depends on the project I'm doing. So in this case, I was, I'm using the terracotta tile marker because it matches this paper, which is grapefruit grove and terracotta tile. Those were coordinating colors in the designer series paper, which by the way is called birthday bonanza designer series paper and it is in our celebration catalog so that's what made me decide later to color so I just color these later depending on what project I'm doing that's when I'm gonna color the top of the cactus so let me show you my projects and wrap things up now in this particular card base is so what I'm doing is now this is if you're new to my channel please subscribe and what I always like to do at the end of my tutorials is show you projects you can you can apply what you learn and projects that I created by cutting out stamped images or designer series paper or whatever I just cut out with my scan and cut. And I also sometimes use dyes, like metal dyes. And I have I'll kind of show you that as well. So in this case I cut these all out with the scan and cut with an outline distance of 0 0.04. I thought about coloring cutting out the party hats using the same technique, but I didn't want an outline distance around the party hats. They are not the same party hats as the ones we just cut out with the scan and cut. The party hats here are from the Birthday Bonanza Designer Series paper. If you'd like a catalog, if you'd like a celebration catalog, please contact me using my contact form. 
The paper is in this catalog here, which will be, I will go through on January 3rd on our catalog launch day. I'm not allowed to show you the inside of that catalog right now because, and that's why it's taped, because we haven't launched yet. But in the Birthday Bonanza Designer Series paper, which you know I'll be trying to cut out with the scan and cut, um, there are back, beautiful birthday backgrounds. And this is the background I used. All the paper is double-sided. And that's what I used because I thought it went well with that birthday saying. I didn't even show you all the papers. I'll show them to you another time, just in the interest of saving time. So suffice it to say, <laughs> in those papers where the little animals, like the koalas and the lions and the, the, the toucan were wearing the party hats, I just cut those out with a pair of scissors. Yes, I do fuzzy cut sometimes. Okay, so that's how I got the little party hats out of the Birthday Bonanza Designer Series paper. Uh, I used some, some little jewels I had. Some, I used the paper pumpkin envelope from a paper pumpkin kit from the December kit. Old olive cardstock, old olive for coloring the little lizard. I colored in his little eyes with some pool party color. And this was all just ivory and crumb cake blends. So I decided to use that sentiment to a stand up friend. And the, and the let me grab the stamp set again. From the gang's all mirror. Happy birthday to a stand up friend. And then I used the dies. I think I got dies from different places. Let's see which dies I use from here. The one die for the next project is from here. I, this die must be from the Best Dressed Suite. Okay, so this die here, the stitched, this stitched die is from the Best Dressed Suite. Okay, which uh, I did a sneak peek of last week. I showed how to cut out pattern paper. Let me see if I can reach for that purse. Yes, I can. And in the Best Dressed Suite, this is some of the what you have to look forward to January 3rd this really cool paper I showed how to cut that out and that was the little stitching and you can even make a purse out of the dies all right let's not digress the next card though I did happy birthday to a stand-up friend I did the same concept I used that same paper birthday bonanza and this time I'm thinking we have a killer special coming up in January 3rd and it's it's regarding joining Stampin up team and you get lots of really cool perks so I already am anticipating a new team member well, somebody, she already told me, I mean, she already told me she was joining. <laughs> so basically I already have a card for her. So this is welcome to the team. And where I got this, this one here, I just thought welcome to the team would be so cute for the meerkats because all these little guys on the team, little guys, girls, meerkats, right? And I got that from a stamp set that only demonstrators can buy. And it's called stamping your way to the top. And I use it all the time for sending happy mail I stamp my envelopes with Happy Mail, and I love stamping, and I've also just done other things with these little sayings. So that's what stamp set I'm using for the welcome to the team, and I stamped it in Old Olive, and then I used a new punch. I'm letting you sneak peek a lot of our products here, as you can tell. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator after all. So I like to show you our new products. This is called Label Me Lovely. So I like to use the Stampin' Up! you know, papers, punches, stamps, but I also like to use, I mean, I like to use the Brothers Scan and Cut, I should say, but I also like to use punches and things to go with that and other dies. Okay, so those are two of my card projects. Now let me make a little room, show you my tags, and then I'll show you my last card. So my tags, my tags I created using the Birthday Bonanza die. Okay, that's these dies. This, this was a really cool tag die and it has already his stitching around it. And so this, this die set comes in the Birthday Bonanza Suite and they're called Bonanza Dies. Okay, so that's where I got these. But you can use a, your scan and cut to make any tag shape. In fact, I've shown that on my channel before. So I started out with just putting the meerkats on a white background, but even though I use the scan and cut, what's nice is they kind of pop off the background, which is kind of nice, the whisper white background. And it still adds dimension when you pop them up with dimensionals or from dimensionals. And I, I have the party hats I cut out with the scan and cut. And then I have another one. I liked it better with red. And there it goes back to the concept of when I, when I was telling you about, I don't color the cactus till later. This one I colored with terracotta tile, but this cactus I, co I colored with real red. And the reason I used the real red marker is because it matched the background of the tag. So you, if you don't, and I also used real red blends to color the little dots of his party hat. Okay, so if you wait to color some parts later, you can match it to whatever project you're doing. And then this, this ribbon is called, I've used this recently on my channel when I was talking about the paper pumpkin kit. This is reversible ribbon. It, this ribbon is so cool. 
it's in our annual catalog and I, I used it because it matched the old olive and it is old olive and pretty peacock reversible ribbon by Stampin' Up. Okay, I'll have a link to the materials I used. And finally, my favorite card of all, I will show you, using the concepts of what we just learned in this tutorial, how to cut out stamped images using your brother's scan and cut, is you can do something like this. You can take a paper pumpkin kit, which comes with all the supplies you need to make cards, and you can just decorate it using your stamped images. So here's a combination of a free stamp set that you can get starting January 3rd, the Gangs All Mirror in our celebration brochure. You can combine that with your December something for everything paper pumpkin kit, and this is what you get. <laughs> you get a super cute little group, and then you can, and it's we're here for you, so you can use it anytime. You can hear you can use it for any support, message of support you're trying to give someone. Someone comes new to your workplace, or someone is is just having a hard time and you want to send we're here for you, that's how you can do it. And so this is, this is just a, simply a card that came in that kit. It's with shaded spruce and old olive little stripes. And I just simply, I just, I just colored and added them and added the little swirly sticker and an envelope. And there you go. And I love that card the most because it's just so much character is going on. And, and the little lizards, I mean, who doesn't love the little lizards? So if you're new to my channel, I hope you will subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new tutorials as I post them. Feel free to ask questions, make comments, and join in the fun. That's all for now. Happy New Year. This is the Paper Chef.